Hey guys, I'm Nick and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial we will be checking out rigid body simulations, morphing and a few other cool things. I found this animation from Strike and L and uh, I know he's X Particles guru and really X Particles beast and I wanted to recreate this in Houdini because the like, logically thinking, the algorithm here shouldn't be that heavy. I mean, we have rigid bodies, we should keep them in place, and we are morphing some of them to spheres. And the key thing is, those little rocks are also spheres, so the poly count is the same, so we should be able to morph them. But as always, before we start, I would like to say huge thanks to everyone of you who are supporting me by purchasing my project files. You can find many, many cool setups on my Gumroad and on my website. Link is in the description. And for this project, also all the project files are in the first link in the description. Your support allows me to dedicate more time to create these tutorials and share them with you. So again, thanks a lot to every one of you. All right, so to start with, we will need to create our rock. So let's go here and we drop a geo node. Let's call it rocks. Here you can see that I have six types of rocks. Um, basically, it's a sphere that may be squished, swashed, or I mean deformed in any way. And the primitive type set to polygon, uniform scale, it's up to you and frequency set to seven just because we need our mountain node to displace it and sort of create a rock so you can see i have different rocks here if i go through the mountain nodes and absolutely crucial is to uv them because we will be using normal maps and all this stuff to create them more realistic and here i'm using labs and labs is um, here you can see I have um, in shelves you can install Houdini labs or you can use UV MRAP, UV texture, like something. Basically what Auto UV does, UV MRAPs your um, mesh and in this way this MRAP is looking okay. I mean not the best one but yeah definitely works. And then you plug them all into the merge node and you have this um, ugly looking thing but yeah then we just drop an owl it's called out rocks and that's it for our rocks you can create i don't know 20 different rocks or just stick with three of them um, completely up to you so now when we have our rocks let's go and create our actual simulation so for your convenience and for my convenience and to place my ocd um everything is yeah in these um, boxes so it's easier to understand what's where but basically we start with our shape and uh, to recreate a strike and else work we we obviously want a torus um, you can create any shape you can even get a human fill it with uh, rocks and then do something with that yeah basically we start with the torus ray is set to 2.5 the only thing that i modified from the default settings and then i added the scatter which yeah scattered all these all these rocks here you can use points from volume uh, to scatter them inside the volume um, inside the torus but i don't think it's necessary for now let's decrease the total count to something like 300 and it will be easier for for us to understand then we need to scatter both rocks and both our spheres what i need to do here is let's say we want to scatter some rocks and i dropped an object merge node and what it does here in the object one i should specify what object i should import and in this case it's obg rocks out rocks so you see we have our clump of overlapping rocks and then we should drop a connectivity node and what it will do it will add a class attribute to every point and then we also need to drop the attribute wrangle and in this attribute wrangle i want to randomize the p scale which will make some rocks smaller and some of them bigger and to do that i just want to write at p scale equals fit 01 changes the value so it is in range of in my case 0 0.3 and 1 so basically 
I grab a random, which as you can see creates a random number between 0 and 1 from a seed, and our seed is at btnum, so every time it will be like random and different. And then I remap it to be not from 0 and 1, but 0 0.3 and 1, because we don't want these extremely small particles, and your RVD will glitch and if you like feed something very, very small. And then I want to randomize the orient, so they are facing, they are rotating all different directions. And this uh, cheers goes to Entagma, where they, I think, they, they showed scatter in the line in that tutorial. But this attribute from pieces, I, I wasn't aware of this node for, for a long time, but it's, it's super cool. So basically what it does, if you write down piece attribute class here and set the mode to random, it will randomly pick one of our rocks. That's super cool. And then you just plug this attribute from pieces into our copy to points and look what we have. Cool scattered rock. And then let's scatter some spheres. So here I created my sphere. Obviously, yeah, we don't need this merge even and, and this connectivity. So then I just drop a attribute triangle, some the same P scale and copy it to points. So yeah, we have our set of spheres right now. Super crucial thing here in copy to points is to check this pack and instance. And despite that, after copy to points, we are unpacking them. We should specify that we want to transfer all attributes in our unpack node. All right, so let's get back to our rocks. So now we want to set up the morph and morph uh, in this tutorial is done with attribute transfer. You can probably use mask from attribute, but I've tried that and in this scenario, I have found it easier to set up with a, just a regular attribute transfer. So we need to colorize our rocks to be black and then we set up a sphere and I'll show you with a wireframe that it's here. Uh, we colorize it to be red and then we transform it and here you can see that I'm rotating the sphere. Every frame, I'm rotating the sphere by the frame number divided by two. So basically at the frame 30, the rotation of the sphere will be 15 degrees. And it goes like this. Then we can set up our attribute transfer. And you can see that if I plug our black rocks into the first input and red sphere into the second input, and I change the source and group type to points, attributes here in the points, I set them to be CD, and conditions, kernel radius 5.8, distance threshold 0.32. You can see that we are colorizing. All right, that's cool, but somehow we should morph them now. So we need to drop an unpack node, transfer all attributes. You can see they are unpacked. And now we drop an attribute triangle. And here again, I write down why we use linear interpolation and what it is. You can check out my previous tutorial where the sphere consisted of these lines and affected by noise. Right now, I will just briefly tell you what we have here. So here we will be morphing between our rock state and our sphere state. So basically here you can see that uh, where we have our mask, we are interpolating from point position of rock and point position of sphere. So that's how our, our rocks become spheres. Again, more detailed explanation, you can find that in my previous tutorials. Then we need to pack that for our RBD simulation. So I'm using assemble node and I'm transferring attributes P scale and M scale. And M scale is used further to animate the scale of the rocks and prevent any overlaps. And to be fair, credits for this non-overlapping RBD Fill thing goes to CGVKey or Tokaru. I'll link, I'll link that in the description and you can go and check his uh, project files and articles and all that stuff. So from our assemble, we should create RBD geometry and we also should create RBD constraints that will keep our rocks in one place so they don't fly away. Let's start with the geometry because it's easier. So first of all, we should animate the scale and not the P scale, but M scale, which basically is my scale. Yeah, and basically here in attribute wrangle, you see that I'm also linearly interpolating between M scale being 0 to 1.5. And this is because I want my spheres to be bigger than 
the rocks. So here I set the M scale and then after assemble I drop an attribute triangle and I animate the M scale to be multiply equal by this channel called scale. So basically what I'm doing here is you can see here the scale is 0.114 and then frame 21 it's 1. So that's how you can animate them to be their default state. So that's basically they they kind of grow and then you plug that into another attribute wrangle and you set the found overlap variable to be one now let's set up constraints from the assemble tab we draw an attribute wrangle and we set the id value of each point to be ptnum and then from that attribute wrangle we drop another attribute wrangle and set the name to be nothing to be blank because our rbd simulation will set up the names itself and then we should merge our set id and set name wrangles into the merge node and then we drop an add we add a points and here you should select polygons yeah actually we're adding polygons you can check remove unused points um select by group and add by attribute and attribute name should be id and now we have everything to create constraints so string variable called constraint name equals pos string variable at constraint type equals position and rest length equals zero so now we have everything to create our simulation in dotnet so let's drop a dotnet and by the way i was doing this on my macbook uh, which is like M1 MacBook Air base base level machine. I don't know how, but that MacBook was twice as fast as my laptop, which is Rock Strix Scar something with i7, 24 gigs of RAM and RTX 2070. Only thing there, and I thought it might be helpful if you don't have like much RAM, you can limit the cache memory because by default it's 5000 and you can limit it to be let's say 100 if you have not that much of a ram and you are constantly like using swap and all that stuff um yeah and let me know in the comments if you want some comparisons between my main windows machine and my macbook because at some point this thing surprises me all right so back here in our dotnet not that much of things we can do and we should do <laughs> so um, we start with dropping RBD packed object and initial object type is set to create deforming active objects is super super crucial because without that it won't work just simply won't work geometry source first context geometry because we are plugging that here into our first input it's first context geometry override attributes is M scale because we want to actually like start with this small objects and then we grow to our like like this initial state initial state in herd velocity from point velocity bullet data shrink collision geometry set to zero collision padding set to zero shrink collision geometry unchecked and physical compute center of mass is also unchecked um, then we also need pop speed limit and pop drag and this is because we don't want our rocks to kind of fly very very fast or spin without control because again we don't have gravity and you may saw all these fails of uh, astronauts trying to catch their toothbrush or toothpaste and basically the same physical scenario here so we had a pop speed limit and maximum speed is set to 10 maximum spin is set to 3 and pop drag um, a resistance set to 0.4 in rigid body solver we plugged our rbd object into the first input and our pop speed limit and pop drag into the last input so in rigid body solver number of substeps set to 30 sleeping time set to zero in constraint solver constraint durations set to 10 constraint solver parallel gauss ensure islands are independent unchecked constraint force mixing to 0.5 um yeah that's i think that's all so then we need to drop our constraints and actually make constraints for our spheres and um, rocks so we drop a spring constraint relationship so here in data options we need to set in the constraint data we need to set strength to be 1000 rest length to be 0 and damping to be 10 and super crucial thing is here in data name we should set our constraint name which in our case is pause and then we drop a constraint network 
constraint network is actually our second context geometry, which is here, RBD constraints, and we drop it in, in, into our second one. And basically from that, it already knows what to do, so we can hit play and boom. You see these red or yellow, yellow dots, these are or spring constraints. Here you can see that how it like expands and here you can see how it contracts again because those are springs. And here you can see that all of the overlaps are gone and our spheres are traveling to our torus. So after you are done with the, with the dot net, you can drop somewhere elsewhere. <laughs> you can drop a dot import node and here you specify your dot net and import style is set to fetch back geometry from dot network. So then we obviously unpack that and here are two options for you. What you can do is render out it with redshift or you can render it out somewhere else where you can use Mantra, but I don't know Mantra. So for me, in this case, it's easier to export that to Cinema 4D and kinda art direct it. It's just my personal preference because I worked many years in Cinema 4D and I'm trying to do these tutorials at least once a week or I try to do them twice a week and the speed of production really matters to me without sacrificing the quality of these tutorials. So many of you guys ask me in comments why I do that, but it depends from project to project. Sometimes I'm okay rendering with Redshift, sometimes it's really easier to set up all the textures and all that stuff in Cinema 4D for me. So basically what I've done, I've file cached that and then output uh, ROP Alembic. If you want to go and render it out in Houdini, you, you can do the following. So you should promote the CD attribute from point to primitive. Then you can group by, let's say, red value more than zero. And let's say it's, it will be a group two. And then you can drop another group and let's say uh, CD R equals zero. So it will be another group. Um, then you can yeah just colorize it, uh, whatever you want. Or you can also drop one material, specify that it should be on the group two. And you can drop another material, it will be on the group three. If you want to follow me to Cinema 4D, um, let's open it up and I will show you the scene setup. So here's my setup. Yeah, imported this Alembic. So you drag and drop your Alembic, it's super simple, just then I dropped material. So I have material of rock and I have some sort of specular material. And here in the mixer, by the way, you can click view and auto range selected and it will be kinda arranged. So we have our vertex map, which is here, our vertex color tag. You can use that to mix between the, the objects. So yeah, that's basically how I, how I mix that. And yeah, super simple three point light system. One is like, like a top light somewhere here. And then another one is from that side. And this one is, yeah, just a straight top light. And I rendered two passes, this one, and then a kind of like a close up. So, and as usual, I'm using Fox Farm to render nearly every of my tutorials. And here you can see that I'm rendering two scenes each to 270 frames. And they were done in like, I don't know, like 10 minutes. And uh, one of them cost me like five bucks and another one cost me actually 10 bucks. But I assume that's because I'm using adaptive sampling and here I got much more frame covered here um, so yeah it took a bit longer to render out and if you also want to render cheap fast and with actually amazing quality check out my affiliate link in the description you can sign up and you will get extra coupon credits on your account so you can test it out and see how fast and amazing this service is so yeah that's that's it for today thanks a lot for watching and i really hope it was useful for you and if you like this video be sure to to subscribe to my channel and if you want to support me and see even more tutorials in nearest future please feel free to check out my website for many useful assets and project files and setups i'm sure you will find something that will boost your workflow I'll be back very soon. Bye.